So I'm on the road again and I'm treasure hunting on my trip to Boulder, Colorado. So join me, I find some amazing stuff and the scenery is so beautiful here. I know you're gonna really enjoy this video. rainy, rainy, cold morning, um, but uh, I'm hoping maybe there's some good weather in Colorado, so. For the first time probably ever in my life, I was extra early to the airport and actually got a ton of editing done on one of my videos. Boulder has been rated as one of the best cities to live in in the United States, surrounded by natural beauty with sunshine almost all year around. It is also considered one of the happiest cities in the country with a really high exercise rate and pedestrian friendly trails wherever you go and tons of green spaces it just makes for a great visit it also includes this wonderful pedestrian only mall right in the middle of the city Even though Boulder is a very expensive city to live in, it's actually known for its hippie culture and it's also a college town and so it was no surprise that we found a vintage clothing store right in the middle of town and I actually bought a couple of things there. For my first night there, we decided to go to the sink, which is a famous little pub in the midst of the college neighborhood. Robert Redford actually used to work here, and what makes it really fun is all the graffiti on the walls. I just love the way that this particular space is merchandised. I mean, look at that. It looks like a little log cabin.
very cute little dresser there. there was a little girl in my life I totally would have bought that dress for nine dollars it was adorable I thought these were so adorable as little pops of garden color I was really charmed by this black and red angel, but I just couldn't justify the price and plus she was really breakable. Then it was time to take a coffee break in this adorable cafe slash home goods store. They had the most delicious handmade turnovers. The adjacent store was so gorgeous, and I just love the juxtaposition of all of the old, chippy, vintage merchandising pieces that they were using that were previously boxes and carts and ladders and etc. But I really took a hard look at everything that they were doing in there to take away some ideas from my, for my own store and my booths. Like, look at this, they're using peas to stabilize those little brushes. Everything was just so beautiful. And I got to talking to the owner and come to find out that she had been an antique dealer for a very long time. And then she decided to go into business with her daughter who wanted to do more gift items. And so together they have created this beautiful space that I just really had a fun time in. On the way home, we actually found an estate sale. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> it was in the middle of the week, but there it was. And I definitely took away some items, including this beautiful blanket. We spent a whole day going to antique malls in Fort Collins and I definitely would have picked up this gorgeous leather trunk. I had picked up something similar to this in Santa Fe the previous year and actually took it on the plane, but this one was just a little too big. These were such a good deal, but they weren't really unique enough for me to want to pack them in my suitcase. It's a 
great shape, huh? It's like never, it's not fairly good. So. I think I need to get this for $65. Then it was time to break for lunch and dessert at the Ginger and Baker. Oh, I love that. The one thing my sister and I have in common is we both have a terrible sweet tooth and we're both always trying to resist. But how could you resist? Look at those pies, they're delicious. And I was on vacation. Then it was on to A and J's collectible mall and a couple of other ones that I forget the names of. I really love these bookends, but they were just a little too expensive for resale. I completely fell in love with this booth. It had really amazing antiques. And after talking to the ladies at the front desk, I found out that this seller, whose name is Kelly, actually goes to France and buys huge containers and brings them back and has a once yearly sale in Denver out of the container and then she takes everything that she has left and puts it in her two booths one that was here and one at the brass armadillo which is in Denver it just really got me even more excited for my trip to France in June and I just I just wanted to stay in that booth for the rest of the day. Yes, everything was really spendy, but I did walk away with some beautiful books. See, where was that where we saw just that plain pine dresser and they had such a good deal on it? Hey, if you're a regular watcher, I'm so glad you're back. I love reading all of your comments. Honestly, it's what keeps me going, keeps me committing to the time it takes to make these videos. And if you're new, I'm so glad you clicked the link. I hope you really enjoyed everything that you saw and I hope that you love a haul because I always do one every single week. Um, my name is Abigail. I own a vintage and antique store in Polsbo, Washington. I have two antique booths in Seattle, Washington. And then I also sell on all of the major platforms, although Etsy is my favorite. Um, and all that information is down below in the link tree. And without any further ado, 
let's get to doing a haul. So we actually went to several different towns outside of Boulder. There's actually not, can I even think of one antique store in Boulder? There used to be several, but I can't even think about, I can't even think of one that we actually went to. So we took off, there's lots of cute little towns around Boulder. And the first one we went to is Longmont because it's not very far away. This is a gentrified, it's gentrifying, a little town as Boulder prices just explode. The real estate here, I thought the real estate in um, C and outside of Seattle is high. It is very high in, Port in Boulder. So um, honestly, at this moment, um, I think it's because taxi it's tax season. Things are a little bit slow. So I have plenty of inventory. So I really wasn't looking for anything. But when you find good stuff, you have to grab it, honestly. Because the worst thing is having... Um, the opposite of buyer's remorse, right? Where you see something and you don't grab it. And then of course, later on you regret it. So I saw these and I did think twice about them. It is this huge bag of these little tins and they say Expello kills moth worms. There's 22 of these in this bag. And when I saw these, you know, typically... Um, I wouldn't pick up tins that don't have lids like this, but um, in our little garden corner, I'm always looking for pops of green to add to it. And I thought these would be super cute. Um, look, as little planters. Is that not adorable? So we stopped at Hobby Lobby yesterday and all their greenery and their florals were 50% off, which is pretty common at Michael's, Joanne's, Hobby Lobby. Um, and look how cute that looked. And then I picked up a couple of little boxes. So I love, of course, these little Italian Florentine boxes. They come from Florence, Italy. And this one I bought because of that amazing burlwood. Look how pretty that is. And so one of them was three and one of them was six. And these will probably go to the store. And then I think I said this last week, little a little piece of art. Look how cute that is. And this one I paid $3 for. This one will be sold online and maybe somewhere I have an easel because I think that's the best way to display it is on a little easel. And I will probably put $20 on it and I guarantee you it'll sell super fast. Then on the way home, we stopped at this um, garage sale and I found a few little things there. Um, their prices seem to be really high, um, mainly because I think they didn't realize that if they, that if they price them, like pricing from eBay, that they're, that they're not going to move. They're not going to move all the inventory they had in there. But I did find a couple of things that I thought were very reasonably, reasonably priced. So these cute little oval frames with these botanicals in them. This one has a butterfly and you see how this kind of comes out. Um, and this one with little dried flowers so although these the price is three on each of these i got them both for four dollars and these are probably i would say from the 1960s maybe but super cute these will go online and i'll price these um, for thirty dollars online so this really blew me away the first time i bought a paint by numbers and there's two. <laughs> I bought a paint by numbers. I don't know why, maybe I like the subject matter. And to my amazement, paint by numbers are really, really popular. And the popularity, popularity does depend on the subject matter, but I have had really great success with anything that involves like sailing ships, um, what else? Animals like dogs, cats, horses. And so, gosh, I think 
these were really inexpensive. I think I paid maybe, maybe like six dollars for the set and these are probably not the finest examples like this one i think has a little bit of bubbling but i think people love them because they kind of look kitschy right so on these i will put these online and i will list them at maybe like 45 dollars, and they'll go fast it's amazing how much people love these so goodbye on those. So a couple of days later, we went north to another little town. It's a college town, an agro town. So the college is all around agriculture um, and animal husbandry. And I never realized this, but um, Colorado, especially this part of the state, is very close to Wyoming. So you have a lot of kids that come to this college, cowboy kids, which is <laughs> kind of cute. Um, anyways, this town is adorable. It's super gentrified now, but it's so, I, there's something about a college town I really like. I like the vibe, vibe of it. It just always seems like there's so much energy, so much activity, so much creativity. And I think that's really the young kids that really give a college town life. Um, anyways, um, not only is it a great little town to hang out in, um, but they have, it's an amazing place to go junking at. They have a row outside of town, a, uh, the main road. There's one area where it is antique mall after antique mall after antique mall. You could literally spend two days looking through those malls. And that I think is where I really got the best deals. So let me show you. Right off the bat, my wing woman, my sister, spotted this lamp. Is that not so cool? And on the lamp, it says it is a Majolica dragon. So for those of you that don't know, Majolica is this type of very shiny glazed shiny drippy glaze um, type of ceramic and it was a, originally developed if I remember right in Italy or France and anyways um, it was adopted by Italy, France, England and it's beautiful absolutely beautiful it always has like a um, embossing of like flowers and vines and fruit. And a lot of times you'll find, um, the most common things to find are like plates, um, pitchers, right? Um, little covered dishes. And, um, you can tell an old piece of majolica because usually there's a lot of uh, crazing, which is basically all these little like cracks, like spider vein cracks. The inside is often painted like a pale pink or a pale lavender, like a purple color. And so I think although this is in a Majolica style, um, it is n probably not I don't know. You know what? It could be made in Italy because it does have that Majolica style. Um, how old is it? I mean, it's pretty old for a lamp, maybe like 1950s, but the subject matter is amazing and the colors are amazing. My sister also spotted these pieces. I couldn't believe it. Like she was really on, she was really on spot that day. So look at these, like these are crazy amazing. These are old, look at that. They are old. I am going to say, and all it says is metal bird vases. I paid $22 a piece for these. Um, and I think we actually found them with um, Google Pictures. And um, I think I'm going to put probably $125 on each of these. I can't remember now what they comp for, but it was high. So this one was made in 
the mid 20th century. So I don't know, 1940, 1950. This one actually retails for up to $600. Um, I already have it listed and I think I listed it at $245 and it's just such a beautiful statement piece. So cool. I also found this little yellow wearable and I bought it mostly because I didn't really think I was going to find anything else. It was only $4 and it's so cute. I found the cutest little tablecloth. Look how cute this is. I love these old cotton tablecloths from the 1940s. Look how sweet. It's got like a little Mexican cowboy and a little Mexican lady with her pots. I did walk away with this set of gorgeous, marbleized, leather-bound, trio of George Eliot's works. So these are so pretty. What's interesting is there is no publication date anywhere in the book. And so looking at them, I'm going to say they date from the late 1800s or very early 1900s. They just make the most amazing display. And, um, these will go online and I will price them at $65 for the set. This next piece is an investment piece and it is the most amazing high-end couture piece of vintage clothing I have found. So this is an Emmanuel Ungaro Parallel Paris is what the tag says. So if you don't know who Ngaro is, he was a high-end fashion designer. And not only is this piece very high-end, but it is totally 70s. Very, very 70s. So I'm going to pop a picture up above. My sister's sister-in-law actually modeled it because it is teeny weeny. So the tag says it's a size 12, but we, um, it's a size 12 vintage, but modern, it's probably more like a two to a four. And Amanda back at the store will list that and we will put like $675 on that. As cool as that piece was, I think this is probably my favorite. And that's this absolutely stunning Serape. Look at how pretty that is. I already listed this online. It is so stunning. And the thing is, is that this is in mint condition also. So it doesn't have any moth holes, doesn't have any tears doesn't have any discoloration from the sun. The colors are gorgeous and vibrant. This one is very vintage, probably from the 1940s, maybe the 1950s, but I'm gonna say probably the 1940s. And on this one, I think I listed it at $245. So it is already online and ready to be bought. Shoot, I almost forgot to show you this little plant stand that comes apart in three pieces for easy packing and this gorgeous 1940s wool blanket. Then it was time for me to head back to the Pacific Northwest, my antique booths and my vintage store. Hey, thanks for joining me on this grand adventure. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you get a chance to get out and do some thrifting, I hope that the thrifting gods will be with you and you find some fabulous stuff. And otherwise, I will see you next week.